All right, welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Everett Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. We're here to talk about everything in terms of the world of professional wrestling, all the action inside and outside of the ring. Backstage current drama, we also talk about superstar news, inactive statuses, injury updates, contract negotiations. We talk about extensions, also, uh, you know, new signings. We talk about promotions from WWE to TNA. To NXT, to Ring of Honor, also New Japan Professional Wrestling, to AEW. If it makes major news headlines in the world of professional sports, we talk about it here on this show, 1,010%. Remember to subscribe to the GSMC Sports Network and hit that like button and f- uh, follow the GSMC Wrestling Laurie Podcast, especially if, you're a, especially if you're a wrestling fan. All right, so now we're going to talk about some New Japan Professional Wrestling, uh, you know, um, Watching these matches, I gotta be honest. Um, super great. I don't really have any, uh, you know, really have any criticisms behind it, but uh, I think, uh, you know, New Japan Professional Wrestling and Stardom, you know, a lot of international wrestling, you know, kind of, I, I feel like it kind of, you know, goes to my roots a little bit more. And I don't want to say like, uh, because WWE is so mainstream and it's been so digitalized that it's like, you know, you can't really have that home for some good old fashioned like wrestling like you know what I mean I don't like I don't know if I'm making sense or not but you know that's just my opinion you know if you want to find some uh, you know some old school style wrestling kind of a nice little nostalgic with you know top tier superstars matches and storylines you know new japan professional wrestling is is it's amazing it's you know it's definitely been it's been around for such a long time it's been successful in the world of japan uh, well all over the world to be honest you have a lot of you know great superstars that you know that come out of new japan professional wrestling not necessarily you know part of the you know the asian descent obviously what you kind of got from you know like aj styles like you got from um you know will osprey as well as king ricochet prince puma or i guess was his name prince puma there's you know there's a lot of great wrestlers like Konosuke Kakashina as well Katsuyori Shibata you know great AEW wrestlers that are killing it and um, I don't know it's uh, also you know Shinsuke Nakamura can't forget the AEW Continental Champion Kaz Okada so um, I don't know it's 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 really great it's definitely really great a thousand and ten percent a lot of people actually um, you know they come to New Japan Professional Wrestling kind of find that passion again you know that you know you had the same thing done with the uh, with Sasha Banks and Mercedes Monet. Uh, so, you know, definitely, uh, you know, also the Young Bucks as well. A lot of good things. Eddie Kingston's good, too. A lot of wrestlers, you know, that are just very prominent in the world of New Japan Professional Wrestling. All right, New Japan Professional Wrestling's King of Pro Wrestling. We had uh, Hiromu uh, Takahashi defeat uh, Mystico. We also had an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championship between the Intergalactic Jet Setters defeating the Bullet Club War Dogs. The IWGP Tag Team Championships, TMDK, retained against the Rogue Army, Great Okan, and uh, and Haner, um, challenged for the IWGP uh, Tag Team Titles. Uh, then we had a never uh, open weight championship match between Shingo Tagachi uh, retained his match against uh, uh, Ryohei. Oh my God, what is that name? Oh, 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 oh! God dang it! God dang it! I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Uh, but um, I heard this match was actually one of the best ones. You know, and Tagachi after watching highlights and stuff like that, I love how he's so like he could be a dominant superstar, but he could also you know. Kind of what I was talking about, like, in terms of WWE, how, like, you know, Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo just look like they tower over their, um, you know, their competition. Uh, or they're just their skill sets. Doesn't necessarily mean they have to be, like, physical, you know, physically equal or physically intimidated and stuff like that. But um, I definitely love how Tagachi, you know, he di- di- uh, dictates a lot of his matchups. He definitely made, uh, you know, um, I can't pronounce his name, look right, look good. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Uh next we have a new Japan Professional Wrestling World Television Championship. Ren uh Narita defeated Jeff Cobb, the champion, the defending champion, and Yoda uh Tatsui. I, I like Jeff Cobb. I know Jeff Cobb, you know, especially during their oh my god, what was that pay-per-view where he felt like he was kind of left out? Uh I can't remember. Oh my god, I'm gonna it's gonna kill me. But I like Jeff Cobb. I you know, Jeff Cobb is a great wrestler. There's no doubt in my mind, I feel like he's probably you know, maybe finding a way to get his way to Ring of Honor, maybe to finally get his way back into AEW. Um, 
There's no doubt in my mind that this guy's, you know, he's a star in the making. I doubt CMLL. Like, I really honestly doubt he's going to go to CMLL. But ultimately, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, this isn't the end of his title reigns. I feel like it's only the beginning. You know, um, he kind of has that nonchalant attitude that I kind of like. Like, it seems like he cares, but he doesn't care. It seems like, you know, he's that guy you hate to love and the guy you love to hate. Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, Jeff Cobb is definitely, uh, you know, prominent within the world of professional wrestling. Tony Khan's promotion. So, um, you know, we'd love to see him kind of hold more gold there. But that's, you know, my opinion, thousand percent. Next, we see the AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Young Buck, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson, announce that they will be at New Japan Professional Wrestling and AEW's wrestling, uh, Wrestle Dynasty. That should be pretty badass. Obviously, we kind of got a taste of what would happen. You know, we had, a, a, you know, a Forbidden Door, which was absolutely phenomenal. It was great. And, uh, you know, I, I can't wait to see these guys come together and kind of have more, uh, kind of have a lot more promotions and stuff like that. Have a lot more, uh, you know, uh, PLEs because, you know, just the, you know, just the different styles of wrestling that you have to like, you know, constantly be wrapping your head around watching these guys perform what they do inside the ring and they're damn good at it. Um, the way they kind of manipulate the clock, the way they, um, you know, the way they manipulate the fans to kind of get them into it. It seems like it's slow. It's steady, but at the same time, you're highly invested. I could honestly say a lot of wrestlers, and I'm not going to name any names, you know, when they're inside the ring and they're having matches and stuff like that. And you're just like, you just kind of like sitting there, you're like, all right, like, you know what I mean? Um, you know, once again, kind of, you know, shedding, uh, kind of shading some goodness. And, uh, you know, giving a lot of props to New Japan Professional Wrestling because every single time they're inside the squared circle, it's a, you know, it's a match willing to wait for it. It's a match willing to be patient and watch for the outcome. And, uh, yeah, definitely. That's you know, super cool. Super damn cool. Super damn cool. All right. We have um, the IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion David Finlay retained his title against uh, Hiroki Gudo. Gudo. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, we saw uh, uh, Duiki. The champion defeat uh show or SH SHO. And uh, of course we have Hiroshi Tanahashi teaming up with uh teaming up with Shota Umino and El Phantasma defeats House of Torture. Obviously, you know, kind of uh, what I was alluding to a little bit earlier when I pressed the pressed the wrong thing there. Uh we have uh, a legend, you know, Tanahashi makes his retirement announcement at um at Professional Wrestling Kingdom. Uh, 25 years in the business. That's a long time. That's, you know, a very long time. Probably got into wrestling, maybe his mid twenties, maybe, you know, perhaps maybe, um, uh, maybe earlier than that, you know, but overall, you know, I feel like the world of wrestling is going to miss him, but he's not going to be too far away. The A's confirmed that his final match will be at Wrestle Kingdom 20, January 4th, 2020, 2025. I think it was, um, or 2026. I'm not too sure. I got to re, uh, got to revamp that. Um, he will be part of New Japan Professional Wrestling's company uh, company president. Uh, and, of course, he kind of laid out his plans of strengthening uh, his company's ties with AEW and um, and stardom, which is, you know, exactly what you probably should do. This new deal with Tony Khan is going to ultimately put your, uh, put your professional wrestling product higher and kind of send it into stars that it never really seemed like it could reach before. But um, I don't know. It's uh, you know kind of crazy. Next we have Tatsuyu uh, Tatsuyu uh, Nato uh, loses his championship against Zack Sabre Jr. Um, Sabre Jr.'s I got to be honest. I, I I thought he was going to achieve success a lot earlier, but now that he has, you know, he defeated Naito, and he was the one who who uh, dethroned um, John Moxley for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. So this guy, you know, he was a boss. You know, he's definitely he's on the map of being one of the greatest wrestlers right now in the business. Um, for uh, Sabre Jr. to kind of wind up on top, definitely got to love, definitely got to throw some respect there. Um, I definitely think he's going to represent the, he's going to represent the title. He's going to represent the company super well. So if I'm new to my professional wrestling, if I'm a fan, just know that you're, you know, gearing, get ready for a nice, long, healthy title run because Zack Sabre Jr. is uh, definitely this next level wrestler that um, uh, Tony Khan's promotion definitely loves. And New Japan Professional Wrestling, like I mentioned, uh, you know, Tanahashi making his retirement. He loves Zack Sabre Jr. So, uh, you know, behind, you know, I don't know if it's projected that much, you know, on the screen. But, uh, you know, behind the scenes, it seems like it just uh, just works so damn well. Just works so damn well. So, once again, New Japan Professional Wrestling, King of Professional Wrestling 2024 happened. And I felt like it happened because I clicked on my computer like around like 
eight thirty a.m. And I was like, oh, uh, you know, uh, October fourteenth. And I was like, what? That's crazy. But Japan from from um from California is about sixteen hours away. Sixteen hours away. So tonight, um, I think it's like almost like damn. It's almost like one or two o'clock right now in the afternoon. So they kind of have their things. They kind of have their PLEs before. You know, over there, it'd be natural to kind of have it around three or four or five. So before we even wake up, and it's crazy, it seems like it happened in the future. But in reality, it's just the time zones. So, you know, I was definitely tripped out finding that out because I was like, because I, I got a notification from my ringside, ringside news that Matthew Nicholas Jackson announced on uh, New Japan Professional Wrestling's King of uh, King of Pro Wrestling that they're going to return. And I got that. I was like, dude, didn't these guys just like fight in uh, Tacoma, Washington? Like, like literally like. 36 hours ago or even shorter than that so i thought that was a you know i thought that was a giant trip i thought it was kind of I, I, you know at first i kind of felt stupid i was like eric come on dude like time zones man time zones so i don't know i was, I was able to kind of bounce back and uh i thought it was kind of funny i thought it was kind of funny all right guys so hey that's it for me today once again hope you guys had an amazing safe lovely weekend thank you so much for tuning in to the gsmc wrestling laureate podcast brought to you by the gsmc sports network remember to superman punch that like and subscribe button to the show follow the show follow the network here at the gsmc sports network we do love a lot of peace love and positivity thousand and ten percent once again criticism is part of the game of sports so obviously we do love feedback feedback is a gift whether it's negative or positive, we can have a nice little conversation about it. Definitely love that you guys are willing to give me your time. Obviously, appreciate it. Remember to follow us on uh, the GSMC Sports Network on Facebook, Twitter, slash X, TikTok, and Instagram. You know, just for more content and updates, we have a lot of awesome podcasters. Like I say, every single show, if I have not made you a wrestling fan by now, we got two football podcasts. The NFL is heating up. We got the GSMC Football Podcast with my boy Kenneth, and we got the Chip Shop Football Podcast with my boy Manny. We got the NBA right around the corner and the N- and the WNBA playoffs. The finals coming around the corner. Make sure you tune into the GSMC Basketball Podcast for all the hottest news, all the latest updates. And um, also follow, follow uh, Tommy's GSMC College Football Podcast every Saturday. is full of surprises with all these schools. You know, kind of. Some of them are shocking. Usually in terms of, you know, you kind of out of all the... Uh, out of all the division or the conferences, you kind of have your like two or three favorites. But I don't know. It seems like it's kind of wide open nowadays. Like, and I'm, you know, I'm trying to trying to get into college football, you know, one step at a time. Of course, you know, when it comes to football, college, or the NFL, you gotta love fantasy sports, your fantasy football. Join my boy Chris Shepard on the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Find out your stardoms, your sitems, who to maybe pick up off the wire wire, who to drop. If your team is doing terrible, make sure you tune into the Chris Shepard um, GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast. Find out how to make your uh, make your team WWE champions. Make sure you tune into that. So, um, yeah, we also have All Around Sports with my boy Jeremy with, G- uh, with Sports by GSMC and TJ with uh, GSMC Sports Podcast. All these guys who have an amazing passion for sports, have an amazing skill as podcasters. They definitely draw an audience in. I give you the Eric Rodriguez guarantee that you will never, ever, ever regret subscribing to these podcasts because the, they're simply these guys are amazing i watch them too i learn from them entertained a thousand and ten percent of the time so make sure you invest some time be a part of this gsmc sports uh bloodline you know um once again that's it for me and i hope you guys had an amazing monday i know mondays can be hard you know gearing up for the whole week but, uh, you know, we got some awesome wrestling to kind of get us, uh, help us, you know, get us through it. Tune into the GSMC Soccer Podcast. Got my boy, Emron, if you're a soccer fan or if you're getting into soccer, make sure you tune in. Stay on this podcast, stay on this sports network for, the, you know, five minutes away. Make sure you tune into one of the best soccer podcasts in the sports entertainment industry right now. Uh, once again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, stay beautiful. But most importantly, I love you.